Hello and good evening to everybody. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. My name is Barbara Garza and I'm the President and CEO for the Westico Area Chamber of Commerce. I want to thank you for taking time for being with us this evening to learn more about our candidates. Um, and this, this year we have our uh, race for our mayor and district commissioners five and six. Today we'll be hearing from our mayoral candidates. As I mentioned, I'm with the Westico Chamber and I'm very excited that you've joined us today in our candidate forum. Our mission with these events is to give the opportunity to our business community and to the community at large to learn from our candidates and hear about their general platform and what they want to do for our constituents. It's really import important to us that we're able to offer this opportunity to the candidates and to the business community to learn about what we, we have in store. As the Chamber of Commerce, I do want to remind you that we are a nonprofit uh, private entity, and our mission is to serve as the voice of local business and organizations in our community. Uh, it's important for us to educate uh, the community on upcoming topics and offer events like this. A candidate forum uh, does this just that, and it's as, as it serves an opportunity for candidates to present their platforms and uh, share with the community their stance on important issues in our community. To let you know, the, mission cha the Chamber uh, mission is together with our partners, we provide leadership to advance a prosperous economy that enhances the quality of life in our community. So it's important, like I said, that we offer opportunities such as this for our community to be able to hear um, the stance of these important issues. Just a few reminders for tonight's event. Uh, no endorsements will be allowed in today's event as our goal is to provide an avenue for candidates to share their platform and to speak to our members and the community at large. As the Westaco Area Chamber of Commerce, we are membership based and so we have members who are from uh, the business community and uh, again, our purpose is to be able to have an avenue for them to hear from these candidates and how these issues may affect them and their businesses. Uh, for the audience, again, we are so grateful for you to be here and to learn about things that are happening in your community. It's important to be well informed and we're grateful for the time you've taken to be here. Um, we do ask that you silent your phones as we uh, will have a moderator who is asking questions throughout this evening's event. And we remind you that this event is not a debate. The purpose of this event today is to offer these candidates an opportunity to share their platform in a presentation style event. Um, and so again, this is not a debate. This is an opportunity for you to hear from them on their stance in different issues. Um, there will be no audience participation this evening. Again, it is not a rally and therefore no cheering, clapping or booing will be allowed or tolerated in this event. Uh, at this time, I do uh, want to introduce our moderator, Mr. John Greider, who is with AIM and Media, uh, Mid-Valley Town Crier and Coastal Current. Mr. Greider uh, also has served as a moderator uh, and has worked with the Chamber in the past and will be our moderator this evening. Before he joins us, I do want to mention to our candidates and thank you so much for being here with us today and sharing uh, your thoughts on the questions that we will be discussing this evening. So thank you for taking time to be here. I also want to let you know that as far as the style of the event, our candidates will be given two minutes uh, for an opening statement and then their questions will be timed from there. We do have a timekeeper up front for your reference. Um, she'll be notifying you as we get through the, each of the questions. Uh, so at this time, please join me in welcoming Mr. John Greider as our moderator for this evening's event. Thank you. Thank you. First off, two minutes, an opening statement. Mr. Suarez. Yes. Okay. Uh, first of all, thank you. First of all, I want to thank God for allowing us to be here today. I want to thank uh, my beautiful wife, Ramona, and my sons, uh, Gabriel and Jonathan, and my other son that's at work to be here, uh, family and supporters. Uh, I am humbled uh, to be here today. Uh, I'd like to ask a question. Uh, we need to ask ourselves, are we better off today than we were six years ago? And we think so. When we came here, came in as, to the mayor's office six years ago, uh, we did not have a stable government. We, we had land dispute with Mercedes. That we, we settled that. Uh, NAP, uh, we had the NAP lawsuit. The firefighters did not have a contract, and there was turmoil in the police department. We, our you know, fund balance was low. We are working on um, increasing the fund balance. Today, we have a double A minus credit rating, but it's the, it's the highest the, you know, Westco has had, and we've been able to maintain that. I'd like to uh, quote a quote uh, from uh, Roberto Gonzalez, Texas Border Business Magazine editor. He states, the fact that the city is growing has excellent schools, churches, and parks to offer, it is also under the leadership of a staple government. 
he quoted that you know, a couple months ago in the Texas Border Magazine, and, and that's the journey that we have uh, taken from 2013 to 2019. Also, the Boys Club was an aversion that getting built, and we took care of that, that issue also. Um, I am humbled and honored that the citizens have, have allowed me to be their mayor for the last six years. I love Westaco. I breathe and live Westaco. God bless you, and God bless Westaco. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Mr. Casanita, your opening statement. Good evening. First, I would like to thank the Chamber of Commerce for inviting me here tonight. My name is Alfredo Castaneda. My good friends know me as Duff, and my former students know me as Coach Duff. A little bit about myself. I was born and raised in the great city of Westlaco. I attended Westlaco High School and graduated in 1997. I obtained my bachelor's degree in interdisciplinary studies in 2004 from the University of Pan American. <clears throat> I have been working for the Westlake Independent School District for 21 years. My journey with the school district began as a bus driver. While working for the transportation department, I earned my bachelor's degree from UTPA. I have a strong connection to the community, feel the need to be instrumental for the change of Westlake. Westlake needs to be restored again to the all-American title. However, what does that this mean? It means returning to the days of conservative spending by investing public funds wisely. Secondly, putting the importance back on the public service is pro by providing the appropriate necessities to residents so they can they do have what they need to survive in the city. <clears throat> and fear of losing all they have worked for due to an inadequate drainage system. Lastly, I want to rebuild the trust with our local government by being a true public servant who serves in integrity. Thank you, and God bless. Thanks, sir. We'll go to questions now. Mr. Suarez, the first question is for you. Tax rates are always a hot topic. Do you have a plan to lower Westlaco taxes? That's a good question, John. We, we had a plan when we came in, in, you know, in, into the mayor's office. We did lower the tax rate from 69 to 66 cents in the last five years due to the flooding and due, and due to the flooding that we've had, consequent flooding, uh, we, we had to take it to, you know, to the citizens to, to do a bond election, which the citizens voted for bond election. And thus, uh, we had to increase three cents because of the bond passage and put us back at 69. If it weren't for the three cents that were lowered, we would have been higher, at a higher tax rate. Uh, we will continue to uh, try to lower the tax rate as we uh, make, make, make our obligations with the bonds and addressing the drainage issues that the citizens want to address uh, through the bond passage. Thank you. Same question. People always want to pay less taxes. I'm one of them. Reducing tax rates now is a slippery slope due to the rollback policies. At this time, I have no plans to decrease taxes, tax rates, but I have a plan to keep them from increasing. My plan, if I elect it, is to work with, with the city manager to bring a full-time grant writer for the next fiscal year. The, the $10 million plan that was passed could have been turned into a $20 million. If we had a grant writer, Next step is to promote fiscal responsibility and minimize wasteful spending. Third, we need to research how we can generate revenue from the city instead of outsourcing services to a third party. Only then, only then do we have the liberty to invest in improving existing city parks and creating new ones like the one planned for the north side. Thank you. Staying with you, Campaigns can be expensive. How can a candidate accept contributions and still remain impartial and fair once elected? Candidates have a responsibility to ensure that contributions come from a source that have a general welfare for the, for the minds of the West local citizens. If elected, I will commit to my motto a true public servant for the people of Westlaco. My priority is to the residents of Westlaco, and my goal is to pave the way for others to, advoc to advocating for the term limits. 
Term limits are a secure measure to keep elected officials impartially in check and balanced. Finally, dealing between the elected officials and cities should be banned. Residents of Westaco, rest assured, I will not be selling any land to the city. Thanks, sir. Mr. Suarez, same question. Real simple, by, by doing RFPs or RFQs, depending on what you know, the city services need, uh, uh, you just objectively select the, the low, lowest, most qualified, quantified uh, bidder. That's how you can avoid uh, from, from uh, being in, impartial, to remain impartial. And, and not aiding somebody that donated to your campaign. So, you know, the, the procurement process has uh, 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 safety measures. If you follow that, then this should not be a problem. Through the RFQ process or the, or the RFP or the RFI process, that can be taken care of. Thank you. Mr. Suarez, staying with you, in your opinion, what is the appropriate size of a rainy day fund for a budget the size of Wessico's. What would you consider rainy day? Disaster, economic opportunity, infrastructure? A rainy day fund, is, uh, it's, I consider it to be an emergency fund, to be the fund balance. Uh, uh, you have to have a healthy fund balance, and I think we've kept the fund balance at 25%. Uh, mentioned the double, uh, double A minus rating. They don't just give you that. They, they have to look at your finances, look at your debt, and they, they scrutinize that. And Standards and Poor give, you know, rates us on that. Uh, it's not, not just me saying it. It, 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 it did happen, it ha happened. So uh, the rainy day fund is, is an emergency fund. We used it uh, here for the, for the floods in 2018, uh, about 1.4 million uh, because of the debris, uh, the work, the overtime. We did not qualify for FEMA PA assistance, so that was used and fortunately, we had a good fund balance, which we still do, so we use that money uh, to, to be able to provide those services and clean up West. Thank you. Thank you. Same question. A rainy den fund are reserved for funds to mitigate the financial burden on the city and the events of emergencies such as natural disasters, economic downfall. As we have witnessed in 2015, 2018, and last year in 2019, this event are unforeseen drain on the city resources and involve in tests and quick intervention that are not accounted for the physical budget. Also, a loss in revenue due to economic downturn will lead to a lower than expected revenue. Current municipal reserves are at seven million. According to the 2019-20 approved budget, there's a 29 million in projected revenue for the city. This means the city has a 24 reserve of their budget and reserve fund. The city has enough to cover costs more than 90 days on operation. And if we, if we encounter more accessible funds, I would like to use those funds for emergencies as we have right now currently on our streets, like Agustadero, who needs a major renovation on their streets. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Staying with you, how will you communicate with your constituents? In this day and age, it's absolutely no way we can be out of touch with the constituents. I will be available to the constituents when needed based upon appointment. I will be present on social media outlets. I will give residents my personal phone numbers available, even on my push cards. I will be available through the text and in email. In this day and age, there's another reason not to be in touch with the constituents. Mr. Suarez? Uh, I will continue to, 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 to have uh, the open uh, meetings on Tuesday uh, you know, at City Hall and by appointment. I respond to Messenger, to social media. I usually return the phone call that same day and try to look at the emails and return via emails, but I take appointments most all the time. So the constituents can get a hold of me. If they have a concern, I intercede uh, and send it to the city manager to, to address their concerns or I meet with them one-on-one. -on -one. I'll continue to do the same if, I, if I'm fortunate to win re-election. Thank you. Sticking with you, next question. What will be your strategy to attract more business investment to Westaco, including large and mid-sized employers, such as high-tech or manufacturing jobs? 
the plan would be to, to have, the, you know, they've done a good job, continue to be more aggressive, uh, you know, our you know, economic arm, which is the economic development corporation, to continue to attract uh, more businesses, uh, which they have done. We've gotten some business uh, attraction here to West Saco in reference, you know, that's, uh, uh, you can see that because of the sales tax rate <coughs> increase, they have our own tax, uh, our tax rate has been increasing, so there's been growth. I, I think that we continue to uh, attract, you know, mid-size. We like to get manufacturing, but if manufacturing doesn't come, then we take retail, restaurants. Whoever wants to come to Wesaco and wants to be a good corporate citizen, we're going to continue to attract them and entertain them. Thank you. Thank you. Same yes, sir, can I, can I ask you a question? Can you repeat the question again, please? Sure. Well, what will be your strategy to attract more business investment to Wesaco, including large and mid-size employers, such as high-tech or manufacturing jobs? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> we need to think outside the box and look at it. At, his, at successful ventures of other municipalities. We need to be smart. We need a smart approach to attract business growth, the right business growth, with higher paying jobs that will have a lasting impact on residents and secure our future. The $850,000 expansion on the Mid Valley Airport is crucial to the type of growth West Laco needs. We need to incorporate medical transport and incentivize a medical stagnant service presence that was currently have in mind in the Mid-Valley. NAP is one of the largest employers in the city and is deteriorating. We need to find a way to work with the medical community to keep our homegrown talent here in Westlaco. We can also take advantage of Westlaco as a geostrategy logistics we can tap into the FedEx introduction, introduction by Harlingen to serve as a delivery process hub. In addition, also need to tap into economic growth around the city to make better judgment, better judgments, and need to tap figures out the type of services to provide. Thank you, thank you, sir. Time. Next question. Many candidates for city office have a background in volunteering in the community. Do you feel it is important to be involved in community activities? And have you volunteered your services in Wessico in the past? Mr. Suarez. Yes, uh, I volunteered. I, I was in the Little League Board of Directors in charge of the umpires back in, in the early 90s, 80s. I was also you know, in a football league. I contributed a lot uh, you know, to, to the sports. Was of this football league, I also umpired. Uh, later on in life, I, I, I was, you know, appointed to a board. I was also the president of the uh, Economic Development Corporation of West Coast. So I've contributed and participated, uh, in, you know, in the community in that manner. And it is important. Uh, we have to get involved and get back to the community. Thank you. Thank you. Same question. Community service is very important. In the past, I have volunteered at the West Coast Youth Football League as a coach for six years. However, to be honest, as a sole breadwinner of, for my family, volunteering is a luxury that many others in the working class profession cannot afford. And has continued and in being involved has been my challenge. My work in my community service continues through my students. As an educator, I stay after school, writing counties of college and work recommendation letters, and even assisting in job placements within the community. We got the highest water rates in the valley. No full-time rider, pipes that burst, that don't drain. Residents and business leaving Westlaco, running for mayor is my community service and my duty. And I promise to, to show my face in the event of another 500-year storm. Thank you. Mr. Suarez. Short and long-term strategic planning is vital in most entities. What would be your top two issues to address well, or goals one, to attain within the next one or two years? The, the issue, of course, is, is, is the infrastructure in, in, as it relates to uh, drains, which we're working on uh, already. And we have some of the projects already completed. 
The, our drainage committee continues to work hard uh, on that, and we'll continue to see, see that through with a bond, bond passage. Uh, I was in the two for 100 events uh, that my opponent had alluded to. I, I, I've been out there, you know, with the workers, city workers, county workers, looking at the flooding, learning the landscape of it. So uh, I've been fortunate to, to be out there and, and, and be helping the citizens. Uh, and, Mark, and I didn't answer it right now, but I've been giving back to the community as mayor the last six years, and I'll continue to do that. The other is the uh, uh, streets that we, when we came in, there was no money for street paving. We, 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 we've allocated a million the first year, and we've done 750 every year, the last two years, 500,000. So we've put a couple million dollars in the infrastructure of the streets, and we'll continue to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Same question. <clears throat> It was what's the most important pressing needs, right? That's what the question was. Short, short and long-term strategic planning is vital in most entities. What would be your top two issues to address or goals to attain within the next one or two years? Okay. As a, as a moral candidate, one of the short-term goals to change the culture of the city, being one of the public services. <clears throat> Providing a, fr a friendly, customer-oriented service. My long, my long-term goal is to change the perception of local office and gain the people's trust. It's essential to improving relationship with the municipal government and gain back the people's trust. If I am elected, I will fight for accountability and transparency and spending. I will work with the commissioners to promote and place term limits on elected officials. In addition, I will advocate for ban on elected officials to bid or conduct business for personal person gain on taxpayer dime. Though intentionally, internet, <clears throat> though intentionally smart spending, we can prevent future tax burdens on residents and business. It is time to shed the distrust and enact policies that will restore trust, integrity, and accountability to Westaco. Thank you. Okay, this is a long one, uh, Mr. Suarez. There's a general business concept that says business, businesses, in particular retail businesses, consider opening or relocating a store location based on the number of rooftops within a certain area or community. Do you have any specific plans or on encouraging or promoting residential subdivision development as both a quality of life issue and an economic development issue. How can Wessico encourage new home building for all income levels when the cost of land and home construction is rising? That's a long one, but that's a good question. Uh, we have worked uh, since 2017, uh, we, you know, our numbers have gone up in the residential subdivisions and rooftops, and that's evident by you know, the quality of life, the parks, uh, people coming, you know, to Westaco uh, because of schools, churches. Uh, we have, in 2017, we had a 203 rooftop, rooftop new houses. In 2018, we had 217, and in 2019, we're on target to about 220 houses. So that's over 630 houses at about four residents uh, for houses, 2,500 more people. And that's because they're coming into Westaco, Westaco's going. So I think that we've already working on that. So the quality of life, the parks, st stable government, fire and police, uh, all attribute to that. Our churches, our school district, you know, they're all, you know, stable. So they're coming to Westaco to live in Westaco and raise a family. Thank you. Same question. In order to increase rooftop is to not just count the, the numbers of houses that we have being expanded in Westaco and residential areas. It's also counting our next door neighbors and creating, as an example, 1015, connecting Barreso, Westlaco, and Ed Chelsea, and using 1015 as a hub to promote more housing and residential growth, and expanding the businesses in that area, which is the lack of, to begin with, okay? And I would like for us to consider that people are leaving because of certain things and issues dealing with inadequate drainage. So therefore, it makes us a better prime example of buying better land at affordable price other than 
going to Edinburgh and bringing in different types of different people into Wasico, therefore buying our residential land and increasing our rooftops. Thank you, sir. Mr. Suarez, business has grown tremendously the past few years. That said, do you feel it is important to attract more tourists to our community? Why or why not? That's a good question. And, and you started with a statement and, and business has grown and will continue to grow because of the stable government and the double A minus and, and the fire rating for the fire, the, the fire department has and the police department. All that attributes to that. You know, we didn't have a stable government. You know, the, the economy will not grow. People will not come here. Tourists come here to Wessico uh, to shop, uh, stay in our hotels, uh, work, put gas, in some, some, or visit family. There was a study done about five years ago by UTPA, uh, and the professor stated, the study states, there was 14,000 people commuting every day into Wessico, and 7,000 would leave Wessico to go work. So that, that's a tribute that they're coming to Wessico to, to work, shop, eat, or visit family, but you have people coming to Wessico more than they're going out. So we're netting 7,000 I mean, people every day more than our 45,000 residents we have here. Thank you. <clears throat> It is very extremely important and beneficial to attract tourism. Tourism is an opportunity to generate revenue for our local businesses. We have a handful of nature centers and there is a missed opportunity to cater to the ecotourism and attract naturalists around the United States during the peak seasons. With the revenue generated from tourism, we can invest in things like improving infrastructure and beautification efforts for the city. With with the improvements in existing parks, we can attract events such as seven on seven soccer tournaments that, <clears throat> that will attract people into the city of Westlaco and will make a prime location for the RGV and will benefit the hotel and the food industry. And, we'll need, and we need to take logic, logistical advantage of our location to attract visitors to come and get to know our beautiful city. Thank you. The final question before closing statements, Mr. Suarez. Improving infrastructure is a normal part of campaign discussion. What, in your mind, is Wessico's most pressing and regarding infrastructure? Well, that, that's uh, related to a recent uh, earlier question you asked. The, right now, the pressing issue in infrastructure, of course, is the, the drainage infrastructure. The, the, and the city has adopted a 50-year you know, storm drain, you know, retention. So, so you know, developers are abiding by that. Uh, we're, we're widening the ditches. We're creating retention ponds to capture more water and take water outside the residence quicker. Uh, that's one of the, you know, crucial uh, infrastructure needs that we need. The other one we talked about is roads, but, you know, sewer pipes and, and, and water lines that we're working on with the, you know, every year we spend about 250000 from uh, CDBG funds, Urban County, and we continue to dedicate that money to go to that infrastructure. And this is like our fifth year doing that. So we've done over 1.2 million of infrastructure improvement, and we'll continue to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Just to start off with, look at the entries and exit points of Westlaco during rush hours. Traffic is at a standstill from Milano all the way to down to 1015. Also, drainage infrastructure is outdated and has, kept, has not kept pace with the current economic growth. In the past two years, we have experienced two major floods events. We have elected officials that own business and build an apartment complex that are not following city buildings codes. Public safety is also another concern. Thank you. That concludes the questions. Each of the candidates now will have two minutes for a closing statement. Mr. Suarez. Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, John, for hosting this and the Chamber of Commerce, uh, for people being here, family, friends, supporters. Uh, Mr. Kassan, thank you for being here, for participating. Again, I just reiterate, uh, we trust ourselves that we're better off today than we were six years ago. Mention some of the, the issues that we addressed, that we'll continue to address. I think we, we are. We continue with your help and support. We continue to move forward and uh, take care of, of Wessico and continue to improve the infrastructure needs. We're working on, on the drainage issue where business continues to boom. 
was to continue to grow. We were, these growing pains of the traffic and, and, and that is being clogged, you know, that we have a lot more traffic coming in. We're going to work on that with, with uh, traffic studies. We also partnered up with Hidalgo County from mile 9 to mile 11. We're going to expand mile 6. It's been in the work for 10 years. We, we've been able to move on it on, in, on the MPO and we'll continue. We're going to let that project here in October. So you're going to see curb and gutter and drainage component improvement that's going to alleviate a lot of that traffic there uh, between mile 9 and 11. And we also have another project that, that we have in the MPO where we partner with the county, Precinct 1, and we're going to expand mile 10 from Westgate all the way to 1015. That's already in the 10th year at the MPO. So it's going through environmental study, and we're going to invest money in there and get that also five lanes to, you know, uh, turning lane and two lanes going east and two lanes west with curb and gutter. We'll continue to, uh, to work on that and our infrastructure and wiring the roads so we can make sure that, that we have a uh, hub here in Westaco. Again, thank you. I love Westaco and I breathe Westaco. I ask for your support. God bless you and God bless Westaco. Thank you. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Once again, thank you to the Chamber of Commerce for granting me the privilege to, of being here today. I would like to take advantage of this opportunity to explain what prompted my candidacy for mayor. I believe that as a citizen of a prestigious city, every individual must be treated with respect and taken into consideration regardless of their level of social economic status. Every citizen in this city matters. Our ancestors have made our city historical. Our parents have established a long life committed to the residing in Westlaco. And our children and the following generations to come will continue on the legacy. Let's work to be ex exclusive, committed, respectful, and dedicated to the city of Westlaco. I would like to propose, Mayor Suarez, an open forum at the Placita Park. We can have, we can hear, we can have people of the Chamber of Commerce there and the citizens of Westlaco now to give it time for the citizens to ask questions and explain their concerns to us. Thank you. Thank you very much. And that's it for this evening. Barbara. Thank you very much, John. And again, thank you to our candidates for their willingness to run for office and serve. Uh, I do want to thank John for being our moderator this evening. I'd like to thank Kay West for taking time to be with us in the evening and, and get this recorded and streamed live. So we we're great, very grateful for that. Um, and to the audience, thank you for taking time to be here and listen to the uh, to the, the the information that our candidates have shared. Uh, just a reminder: early voting uh, by personal appearance will begin on October 21st. Uh, through November 1st, 2019. Polls will open from 7 a.m. to 7, uh, 7 p.m. Again, this is October 21st through November 1st. Election day is November 5th, 2019. Most importantly, we thank you again for being here and we remind you it's important for you to vote. So please make sure to take time to either attend our early voting opportunities or on uh, election day. Thank you again for being here. We appreciate your time. Good evening.